The safe conduct of research principles are foundational to the work we do at PNNL. I'm very passionate about your safety and sending you home the same way you arrived. In this story, you'll hear about a very hazardous project we recently conducted at the laboratory. It was successful in part because of the cooperation and the discipline of the team members keeping the safe conduct of research principles in mind. In February 2018, after months of planning and preparation, a project team at PNNL's 318 building in Richland received a highly anticipated shipment, a radioactive source in the form of cobalt-60. The shipment arrived by truck from a vendor in Idaho Falls to replace an aging source used in research. Cobalt-60 is necessary for testing a variety of materials and how they're affected by exposure to radiation. The source, which packs 11,500 curies, is in a special form capsule about the size of a C battery. For transport, it's sat inside a cask that looks like a large blue bowling ball. Then the cask is protected by an overpack. Upon arrival, a crane removed the cask and lowered it through an exterior pit into the 318 building. Staff then rolled it via pallet jack to its final resting place in the high exposure facility. It was then transferred remotely to a shallow underground storage carousel by vacuum with monitoring done via video. There it is. There it is. Good job. Good job. It's in right. right. the paper. See it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, in right. okay, good. it's now available to researchers for its useful life of about 10 years. Project lead Jim Hilliard, Project engineer Greg Carter and technologist Randy Berg have a combined 90 years experience in nuclear operations. Experience that has taught them just how crucial safe operations are. We understand the dangers of radiation and so we don't want ourselves or our friends going through any of that. The arrival and transfer of the source were carefully planned and managed. Full mock-ups were used to practice and train to each step of the process so hazards could be planned for and mitigated well in advance of the source's arrival. We had to start our planning, which included maybe 20 to 30 steps. Each of those steps had tentacles that maybe five or ten steps off of that. Lots of mock-ups, testing um, for months and months, um, improving on the mock-ups, getting outside advice. We, we did find a, a good dozen or more improvements, technique changes. By incorporating the safe conduct of research, or SCORE principles, into the planning and execution of the work, Hilliard says it's clear to PNNL staff and subcontractors that questioning any step in the process is the right thing to do. You know, all those SCORE principles are woven into this activity. I can't say, you know, we're just like, it's one SCORE principle, because I would like to think they all apply to this work, and I think we did a pretty good job of applying all of them to this work. Mm -hmm. Hilliard is a strong proponent of the SCORE principles and the value they provide to him and his team for building trust and helping staff feel empowered. I really had to trust them being somewhat new to the lab. I had to trust them to, to walk me through the job, and then also um, they had to trust me to know that I, I knew what I was going to be doing for my dose rate calculations. The relationship with everyone has to be very trusting. And my staff has to feel like, well, they can stop the work. There's not going to be a repercussion if something's wrong. I'm the leader of this work, and I'm good with them stopping the work. And, and I know my team feels that way. I mean, boy, I'd be really ashamed if they didn't. In the middle of the source transfer, the team identified a hazard that required additional evaluation. The radiation protection technologist detected a higher than expected radiation field. And when we pulled the plug out of the cast, we had a, a photon scatter that we didn't account for. Immediately we stopped the work, made sure everything was in a safe condition. Throughout our lunch period, uh, we planned with the radiation protection group. We replanned the work, replanned the entry, took some additional uh, surveys to make sure it was safe, and then we went ahead, stepped back into our procedure. The project was declared a success and made even more sweet by the team far exceeding their Alara goal, or their goal that radiation exposure be as low as reasonably achievable, about 40% of the expected amount. Because we stopped, the RPTs got um, a better instrument, went and took a better uh, measurement of the, of the dose, and so we knew better what we were getting into, and so when we re-entered, we, re we were actually um, going into a much better characterized field than an estimated field, it was actually a measured field. It's important to maintain safety for all the workers to make sure that they're 
going home the way that they came. Not only are these people my coworkers, but they're my friends as well. It just comes natural to keep your friends out of trouble, right? You know, that end game is we can bring in a source like that, we can do it safely, and then we can conduct research for the next 10 years with that source. Makes you feel pretty good when, when you've not only protected yourself, but others. This story shows that even the best planning can't predict an unexpected outcome. You must have the courage to reevaluate and reassess before moving forward. I'm really proud of the work of this team. Performing the work safely and correctly is what's most important. This is what I expect of all PNL staff at the laboratory. Please let me know if you have any ideas that we can share with others to enhance our safety at the laboratory. Thanks for what you do and stay safe.